Geneva, we're going to be talking about new cars from Aston Martin. We're going to be delving in the wonderful world of resto modding classic cars, and we're going to be spending a little bit too long in Bentley's hospitality area. So if you're a bit shocked for a second, okay, this is still your favorite watch channel. My name is Alfie. A quick backstory. A couple of months back, uh, Christian and Anna came up with the idea of incorporating car content into the channel. Uh, small issue there, they don't actually know anything about cars. So I got in contact and said, would you like any pointers or get anything started? So lo and behold, they give me the keys to the channel today. And for our first video together, we're going to be attending the Geneva Motor Show. Now, for those unfamiliar, Geneva is la creme de la creme, the top of the pile on the motor show circuit here in Europe. Every significant car launch of the last 90 years has taken place there, and this year is no different. So I wanted to go along and figure out what I thought was most significant of the show in 2019. Quick wristwatch check. Uh, now, as at the show, I am wearing my very own Oyster Perpetual 1500 date on a bison hide leather strap, well worn in by yours truly. This thing is not available on the Theo and Harris watch shop, so hands off. Let's get started. Okay, we have to talk about Aston Martin because I think what they're doing here is very, very significant. If you're used to Aston Martin doing the standard sort of James Bond front engine Grand Tour type of thing, this comes as a shock. What Aston Martin's doing here is for the first time in their history, they're releasing three mid-engine supercars. This is hotly contested territory because it means they're taking direct aim at both Ferrari and McLaren and doing so in spectacular style. I'm very impressed with what they're doing this year, but this is a very, very big deal. This is sort of um, persona non grade in, in terms of the car community. You don't take direct aim at Ferrari like this, but I'm really, really glad they did because Ferrari need more competition. At the moment. They're resting in their laurels. Anyway, brilliant. Pagani. Again, Pagani didn't really have that much of interest new at the show this year, but I had to go and pay my respects to the exquisite 1999 Pagani Zonda. Pagani's done very well in their first 20 years, but this is chassis number one. This is their very first car, and it's a special car for me because it's one of the cars that really got me into cars. The way they're sort of, uh, the way they're sort of put together is unlike really anything else that was coming out in the late 90s, and that's part and parcel of why they survived in the long run when so few small sports car manufacturers don't. Um, really, really worth paying attention to. In terms of the cars on uh, on Bentley's stand, I think the most interesting thing they had there was a delicious 1920s Bentley. This sort of thing, it looks it looks like a lorry, it looks like a sort of vintage uh, hauler or something like that, but this is actually a race car. This was a very successful race car in the 1920s. This is from a sort of era where it was sort of a, a, a toss-up between whether you were going to win with the biggest engine or the lightest car, and Bentley won with the biggest engines. The manufacturing methods have been invented since that prevent this sort of thing from being feasible now. So what you're looking at with all these hand-built components and heavy steel axle pieces and that sort of thing, that's never really gonna be done again. The old cars are really good fun. What we're looking at behind us is the Mulsanne, which is a peak Bentley today. Very expensive, very well made, loads of room, extremely ostentatious. I know we actually came to Geneva to go look at some new cars, but Bentley has actually been a bit nice to us, and that's why they're going to take up half the film. Yeah, I feel bad. That was your coffee. And I didn't I wasn't Don't even... Don't worry about it, dude. We managed to get onto the stand of the Bentley this year and into their sort of back uh, VIP section. Uh, don't ask, I haven't bought a Bentley. This is, uh, this is really thanks to a friend of mine called Harry 
who's got an uncanny ability to finesse the right sort of people to get into this sort of thing. So I'm afraid although I went there to see the new cars, I really spent quite a lot too much time in the Bentley area because they were being very nice to us. But this was an interesting sort of uh, look into the customer experience uh, section of things for this sort of high end of the market. The, the Geneva Motor Show borders on Geneva Airport, by the way. So they've got a special set of stairs in, on their stand that lead directly to the runway for this purpose. Idea is that if you're an expectant customer, if you're uh, taking an order on that day at the show, you, you would land most likely in your own plane, um, be picked up on the runway and driven directly into the back entrance of the show. Up there, there's all manner of free bar loveliness that we, uh, we found ourselves among a number of Bentley owners and we didn't really quite fit in, but you know, fake it till you make it. Uh, let's stop messing around in the lounge now, guys. We're gonna go look at some cars. What? Generic Blocker 12, guys. We got kicked out of Bentley for drinking too much of their coffee. <laughs> Not clickbait. <laughs> Singer DLS. This is a resto modded car. For those unfamiliar, resto modding is the process of taking classic cars to their bare components and rebuilding them to modern specifications. Uh, no one does this better than Singer, so if what, if what you think you're looking at is a 1971-ish 9.11, you're wrong. This thing was built last year, completely in carbon fiber, with an engine from Formula One legends Williams. Now the 9.11 has been in production since 1963, as we know and I think it's not being perfected quite as well as Singer has here, not even by Porsche themselves. So I'm a huge fan of this car. The consequence of that, of course, is that it costs somewhere in the region of $2.3 million. So if you want one, you can pony up the cash and remortgage a house or 10. Brilliant company, Singer. They also make watches, by the way. Last year they debuted, uh, they debuted their chronograph. Now this isn't just some recased at a movement sort of generic, what have you. This is their own movement that they commissioned and developed over a period of 10 years. Very, very interesting piece. You tell the time sort of around the, the, out, the outside of it, like a, sort of like a jump hour, where the, sort of the discs around the outside rotate to tell you the time. And that's so you can sort of read it as you're driving. It's a driver's watch, and that leaves the center of the watch open to the chronograph functions. Really, really worth checking out if you want to go see that sort of thing. Honda. Now, despite uh, the fact that Geneva's predominantly uh, hyped around the very expensive cars, this was actually my star of the show. I really have a lot of respect for people who design in these sort of consumer market cars and still do such a good job of it, because these are built to a cost. Now, if you know Honda right now, uh, you, you'll know that much of their stuff of the last five, ten years has been particularly sort of vulgar and over -designed. It feels as though they've sort of lost their way, and um, that's why this car is so exciting, because it's Honda getting their mojo back. It's an electric car as well, so that bodes very well for the future of sort of electric consumer cars. If you had your heart set on a Tesla Model 3 last year, you may want to have another look at Honda, because that really is spectacular. I think the reason why that excites me so much is because the Zondas, the Bugattis, uh, the, the higher end of this thing is, is all very fun to look at at the motor show, but it's not really something that's going to be decorating your residential street. For that, we're stuck with the standard crop of small hatchbacks and uh, cheap cars. And when those are done correctly, it's a service to all of us because they're going to be built en masse and we're going to have to look at them every day. So if you can make them pretty, it's very respectable. So well done, Honda. All right, we're looking at a broken man here. I've been walking for about 12 hours. It is a marathon Geneva, but it was absolutely amazing. No, I'm chuffed to bits with my day. I absolutely recommend it. The Geneva is the Basel world of cars, and it is a trek, but it is a hell of a trip. All right, I have been Alfie for Theo and Harris. Thank you for watching, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.